Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Joe. Welcome to SNES's Life Recap number 102. Uh, covering this time, Zero the Kamikaze Squirrel, ES Pennant, <laughs> ESPN Sunday Night NFL, uh, the Acme Animation Factory, Donkey Kong Country, and Dragon View. So let's get started. Zero the Acro or Kamikaze Squirrel. <laughs> I've wanted to say Acrobat because this is a spin off essentially of Arrow the Acrobat. I guess Zero was one of the enemies in those games. I didn't get far enough in to find him. So I didn't realize that until I was kind of reading about it. The graphics, uh, well, mm, the graphics are fine. The art style is good. I like the way everything looks. It's bright. It's colorful. The music was solid. The gameplay is where this one kind of lost me. So I mostly enjoyed playing it. It was a fairly linear uh, platformer I didn't have a huge problem with that but it expects a lot out of you in terms of precise like jumping and then you have to learn how to do this like flight mechanic where you like glide around and it was very not intuitive and the jump was very slippy to me and so I just didn't really enjoy it a ton it, it was okay you know, I could definitely, if you liked the Arrow the Acrobat series, this would probably be right up your alley. I didn't care for the first one. I thumbed up the second uh, Arrow the Acrobat. I felt like it improved a lot on the first. But this one just kind of felt like a step back again, where it's like, they got ambitious, and they tried something new, but the whole flight mechanic thing just, just wasn't cutting it for me. I didn't care for, the, for it at all. Um, so yeah, I gave this one a thumbs down. Uh, I could see, you know, definitely some people like it. I'm not those people. Up next, we got ESPN, Sunday Night NFL. This is, I mean, essentially, it's a Madden clone is what it is, right? Like, just call call a spade a spade. You've got uh, vertical field play, moving the ball. The sprites are okay. The graphics are all right. It's, this one's a little disorienting. Well, not disorienting, that's the wrong word. I can't think of what to say. So it lets you see way far downfield. Madden usually cuts you into like a 20-yard section. This one lets you see all the way to the end zone, basically. So it's really hard to judge kind of where you are on the field in terms of the yard lines. Uh, and you really can't read the numbers so well on the side until you get like right on top of them. So you end up moving a lot further than you realize. The game played okay. It, they, I mean, of course, no music. The sound was all right. It, it controlled f well enough. Uh, I didn't hate playing it, but I've definitely played better football games. So I gave this one a thumbs down. You know, th There's better choices out there, but this one was standard middle-of-the-road football. I don't know what else to say than that. Acme Animation Factory. This was interesting. I've never played this. This was essentially another version of Mario Paint, uh, albeit with significantly less options. <laughs> The palette that you can see there at the bottom and the toolbar at the top, uh, just like Mario Paint, there's a music composer and a set coloring book and there's an animation panel. Uh, you can make your own kind of stamps again. Not your own stamps, I guess, this time. You can make your own patterns. Uh, in the end, the only reason I would ever want this over Mario Paint, I think, is because of the cartoon characters, which I don't have one on screen right now. I'm just doing a background. But it uses the licensed Looney Tunes, so you can get Elmer Fudd or Wile E. Coyote or Roadrunner, uh, Sylvester the Cat, Tweety Bird. They're all up in there. And so you can pull up drawings of them to color them in, or you can use... Uh, there's some preset animation frames of them that you can color in and change and move things around a little bit to play with. The interface felt a bit clunkier than Mario Paint, not quite as well refined. Uh, so here's where you get to kind of make your own colors and stuff. And it works well. It works with the mouse just like Mario Paint did. But I definitely feel like Mario Paint was almost certainly the better product here. This did have a mini game. Mario Paint had the fly swatter. This had, it was basically memory. Uh, not anything special there. 
it just it, it wasn't awful it's just not as good you know I, I give it a thumbs down because let's face it if you're gonna seek out a super nintendo and a mouse then you're gonna get mario paint god damn it because this is i mean it's just not as good <laughs> mario paint is better in literally every way so yeah that's a thumbs down on that one next up the always vaunted donkey kong country there's really nothing to say that hasn't been said about this game a billion times over the graphics are fantastic the backgrounds and layers are beautiful everything moves and plays well the music is some of the best music on the super nintendo uh it, it is a difficult platformer everybody complains about mario being too easy and you're you're probably right mario is made for absolutely everyone to enjoy including children who might not have the uh skills time control ability uh fine motor function to get good the donkey kong country games are another story now i did beat this i used save states to get through it over like three days but it it's a hard platformer and while you can absolutely do it like i've beat donkey kong country before without save states but it's just like you know for the stream i want to get it done but like it's a good game and it's difficult and i know donkey kong country 2 just gets better i don't care for donkey kong country 3 uh this one gets a thumbs up man it if you're gonna buy a super nintendo and you want a platformer you're gonna get super mario world you're probably gonna get like mega man x and then you're gonna get donkey kong country probably two but you could go with donkey kong country one and be just as happy with it i think so an excellent game 100 percent recommend on donkey kong country you can't really go wrong with it donkey kong country and final up is dragon view uh, this is, well, I mean, as you can see, it's kind of a side scrolly action deal going on, but there was a game I played very, very early in the Super Nintendo's lifespan called Draken, and it was an RPG where you had a party of four dudes and you wandered first person around this map uh, going into these areas, and it pissed me off so much because you get moving out in the overworld and it's this first person kind of roughly 3d rendered map and i found a town and i went to go into town and there was a shark in the moat and every time one of my guys got on the drawbridge to cross into the town the shark would jump out and eat someone and he just ate all four of my characters that way couldn't do anything about it it wasn't a fight i had no special ability to get by it was literally just random luck i, I looked it up later on google and they're like no it's just random luck and then another time i was playing it and i was just walking down the road and some giant star constellation monster popped up out of nowhere and killed all my guys with laser eyes and i'm just like what kind of shit game design is this that is just like completely random shit and this game has the random shit um but it is represented on screen by like smoke clouds so they are avoidable if you really want to avoid them uh, i felt like the mission or the quest lines in this were far more linear uh, they very well directed you there are roads on the map so you don't have to wander blindly like it's pretty obvious and here i come out into the first person view of the map world and you get a map which i'm looking up right now and it very clearly says here's city y here's city b here's a cave entrance there's a cave entrance you know and when you go to the towns people are very much like hey go north and so it really street signs or signposts you which is necessary i think like that was a problem that draken had is they were like go find the castle and get the information and you're just like awesome where's the castle uh, and I know, like, there was some information to be found that was like, it's in the Northeast. But I felt like this one was much clearer on what it wanted you to do. I actually played this one for two nights. I did enjoy it. I'm going to give Dragon View a thumbs up. It is a very expensive game. It's like 130 bucks loose, which is, I, I, I can't explain that. Uh, but I did enjoy it. I thought it played well. The music was good. It changed when you went into different areas. Uh, the difficulty curve 
uh, it definitely gets up there like you know i got to the second uh sector basically and they're like hey go to this cave and you'll find a bow and then you go to the fire cave to find the fire ring so that you can progress to the third area through the ice caves and i went to the fire cave and i'm like i it's just killing me and i don't know how to get through it and then so i went backwards and they're like oh you know go talk to this guy he he might help do things but they didn't specifically say hey this guy will help you get through the fire cave they were just like go talk to this guy he's an old adventurer and you go talk to him and he's like hey i'm in he's in this other area and he's like go all the way back to the first area and talk to this guy and he'll give you the ability to get through the fire cave i'm just like jesus christ a little bit of backtracking um but that's okay it was progress it, it lined my progress out for me and basically told me what to do so take it for what it is i did enjoy it i think it might be worth playing if you're interested in that kind of stuff give it a whirl uh but that's it for recap 102 um coming up the next set of five games i don't even know what i'm looking at so yeah that's it thanks a lot guys i appreciate you always sticking with me here on youtube and y'all have a wonderful night